The scripture that goes with this is 1 Corinthians 3 and 9. And it says, For we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. We're all a part of the same operation. We are co-laborers with God. So therefore, you must do your part. God was not going to do what he told Adam to do. If Adam obeyed God, then he gave God something to bless. You cannot ask God to multiply a seed you don't sow. Nothing times nothing is still nothing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We're praying all the time. Oh, God, bless me. Bless this. Bless me. Bless this. Yeah. You know, what we're doing is asking God to come down and bless our wagon when we ought to get on his wagon because it's already blessed. Mm -hmm. yeah, you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. In this do your part, you've got to remember that there is a 10%, 90% rule. 10%, 90% rule. It is not more obvious in any place than it is in the tithe. Somebody tell me, how much is the tithe? 10%. 10%. 10%. <laughs> She said that to me because she's, she's married to me. <laughs> it's not 7%. 10%. It's 10%. And God said, the tithe is mine. In Malachi, he said, will a man rob God? Show enough will. <laughs> rob, rob. Will a man rob God? How can you rob God? By taking what's his. See, Adam did that. That tree in the garden, God said, don't touch that. Don't touch it. That meant that I, I'm the only one that has any control over this tree. You, you leave that one alone. You have, all the other trees are yours. That one's mine. So you might say that Adam ate the tithe. He ate something that didn't belong to him. It belonged to God. Now, he had permission to make that decision, but it was the wrong decision because God already told him, don't do it. I don't know why I even brought that up, but the fact is, God said the tithe is mine. That's 10%. It's not the middle 10%, and it's not the last 10%. It's the first, first fruit. It's the first 10%. What I want you to understand with me is that does not belong to you. It may have come in your paycheck, but it's not yours. It's God's. He already said it. I'm sorry. I didn't make this up. It's in your Bible. God said, that's mine. You cannot use it and be blessed and prosperous. you got to. See, you can't, you can't give tithe because you can't give something that don't belong to you. God said, it's mine. So all you do with tithe is render it. And that opens the windows of heaven. He says, see, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing which you will not be able to receive. But he said, you do it by rendering your tithe. Now, I'm not preaching a financial message. I'm making a point here. you got to do your part. So here's the thing. What, when you tithe, you open the windows of heaven. You just got those windows open with the tithe. But what comes back through in blessing has to do with what you give. See, offering is giving. Tithe and offer is two different things. A tithe is 10% that belongs to God already, and you obey Him and render it. The offering is what you decide to freely give unto the Lord, and that's what, that, was, that is what determines what comes back through that window in blessing that you cannot receive. Because God restores a harvest to the seed that is sown. He works on sowing and reaping. Do, do you get it? Yes. Yes, ma'am. How do you determine when it's given to you in other than cash? You have, if someone gives you, you know, gift or something, do we have to put a value on that and then give them? I mean, how do you?
you feel that? Let me, let me explain something to you. I'm not talking about the federal government, and I'm not talking about the IRS, and I'm not talking about taxes. Yeah. Okay. This is not a tax. Yeah. See, a tax is something that the federal government says to you. Mm -hmm. says to you. Yeah. you give me this amount because you're in this country, and you, this is the law, and you, you owe me this percentage. And it's, trust me, it's more than 10%. But anyway, you give me this because it's a tax that has been levied on you. God is not taxing us. God is testing us mm -hmm. about our obedience. And he said, if you want to prosper, if you want to be blessed, then you do this. Now, I started out saying to you, 90%, 10%. What God is doing is building a bridge. I'm just using it. An, an analogy here. He tells you to build 10% of it, and then he was, builds the other 90%, but he gives you credit for the whole 100% because you did your part and built the 10%. That's how the blessings through that window come on that bridge of your obedience and faith in what he promised. You see that? Uh -huh. Is anybody that don't get it? I don't get it. I want to open you may have already said it, but you, you tie it on the, what you get before the taxes are All right, taken here, out. Here is, once again, we're, 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 uh, we're equating this to a tax because that's what we have to live with in this realm as far as taxes are concerned. What you are tithing upon is your income. So now, let me, let me just put it to you like this. If you work for a, let's say, a company, and your company takes out uh, Social Security taxes and, and other, whatever, retirement and this and that and the other. So actually, in your check, you get maybe uh, $200 less than you made, okay. right? Yeah. So you're wondering, do I owe what I got or what I made? I'm going to tell you how I have always operated. I've always said this. I made this amount. Okay. Maybe I didn't get it, but I made it. God gave me strength, and I made this. If they held it out, it's their responsibility to pay the tithe on it or to, to, or, or to be responsible for it. They're accountable for that because they're the ones that got it. But I go ahead and pay my tithe on the whole amount that I made. I'm not tell, telling you that this is what you should do. I'm telling you what I do. I pay my tithe on the amount that I made and I hold the federal government and the state government responsible. That way when I pray, Lord, these people have my money. They're getting support from me, not by my permission, but by their laws. And so in the name of Jesus, I'm coming against this because they're doing wrong about it. Uh, you know, and I'm not talking about finance. I'm talking about the, how they work and how they operate and what they do or sometimes don't do. Does that make sense to you? I'm holding them accountable before God. Uh -huh. Somebody said, well, I don't do that. I, I, I only pay tithe on what I make. Okay, I don't argue with you about that. Some people do that. Some people pay on what they get. Some people pay on what they make. It's irrelevant to me. You work that out with God. I'm just telling you what I do. But now, you have to render what you deem to be the tithe. And it doesn't come off the tail end because you'll never have it if you wait to the end. Yeah. Yeah, it is first, first fruits. First. Belongs at, it should be the first check you write. And here again, I'm not saying this self-servingly. you got to know that. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. That's the word. Yes, that's the word. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, this is a, a law. Now, how you determine... What is income to you, you're going to have to figure that out because you are you. You know what's been increased. 
It's increase. It's increase in your life. That's what it's called, increase. If it's interest on, on money, money that uh, you've never paid tithe on the interest, you say, well, well, I got money in the bank. I tithe on it when I, when I got it. Then I, then, then I put it in the bank. Okay, don't, don't tithe on it again. You've already tithed on it. That's fine. It's just common logic on how you figure and factor. If, yes, sir. If, oh, coming back to Cassie's question. That's okay. If you gave me $10, do I have to pay a tithe on that? Is that increase? No, but it's not income. Well, what is what's the difference between income they and increase? They want to know between net and gross. Income is earning and increase. He was thinking as gift, but I tithe on gifts because it's more than I had. I was thinking this happy question. If I gave her a purse, in my mind, she doesn't owe a tithe on a purse because even though it's a gift, it wasn't a financial <coughs> increase. And to me, the tithe is is a, is a financial increase. Well, Not that it has to be because if you got you know, four houses, or you got stock, or you have things like that, that's also finances. But if I came up with ten cows, I could, you know, perhaps tie the, one of the cows. You know, Good. if that's you if have you ten in those cows? cows. <laughs> so, so, but if I gave her a purse, she's like, do, how do you determine how you give God a tithe off of that? All right, let's, let's see if we can simplify this. Yeah. Let's say you have a pile. That's pretty simple. A pile. If somebody paid you and you put it in that pile, that, that's the increase. If somebody gave you something and you put it in that pile, that's the increase. Doesn't matter where it came from. You got to separate the tax and the tithe because the federal government got all these little ins and outs and things that you, you well, that's income, that's not taxable, this is taxable, that's not taxable. Da, 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 da. I'm talking about simple 10% of the increase in your life, God said, that's mine because I gave you life and breath to receive that. May I ask a question? Now, yes. An obvious answer. Yeah. You yeah. already yeah. tied it. Oh, you well, didn't make anything on it. So, so it won't be. It's not an it was increase. It's that. a payback. It's not an increase. You didn't get more. You got the same amount. So if, if they if paid I you back interest, then you can tie it on the interest. But, but if I wanted to, I could. That's yeah. my business. Oh yeah, you yeah. can tie it on whatever you want to. You can do whatever you want yeah. to do. Right. But you got to do the the minimum. You got to do what God says to do. Right. When I when I get paid, that's what I. Yes, sir. Somewhere in the Ezekiel, I think it is, or one of those older guys, it talks about um, one kid out of a hundred, not ten kids out of a hundred that you sacrifice. Say that again. <laughs> Somewhere in the Old Testament, yeah. it talks about uh, giving God one out of a hundred of cows or goats or kids. Well, How much percentage is that? One percent. Is that Marvel. the tithe? Marvel. Yeah. Kind of you think so? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know where you found that at. No, it's the one. Yes, ma'am. I want to give you a purse. You've got to get the change. Okay. This is tithe. Sabbath principle. 
And the Sabbath principle is something that belongs to God. That seventh day belongs to God. That 10% belongs to God. And, and what I'm saying is, if you feel like you ought to, do it. If you don't feel like you, you should, then don't. It's up to you. But I'm just saying that God said 10% of the increase is considered by God to be tithe. Now, I can see you looking at me like a mule in a new gate. I know you're still confused. What do you want me to say? Do or don't do? I don't want, I don't want to feel guilty. Don't. No, yeah, don't. don't feel guilty. That's not, Listen, no, those kids gave you that, and, and look, even Uncle Sam will say to you that gifts, even gifts are taxed. Are, are, are taxed. Mm -hmm. So I do need to assess when each gift is Approximate amount for each gift, and 10% of no, no. Was it money? No. Money, things, you know, gifts, you know, clothes no, or whatever they give you. Um, at a, at a party, Listen. At anything. God knows your heart. God, see, God judges your intentions. Well, I never thought of that before. Well, I'm sorry I brought it up. <laughs> I was just simply trying to make a point. And obviously, I bogged in the bog. Here. Yes, you did. Don't do it, Miss Cassie. I didn't intend to do that. Look, don't, don't worry about it, Miss Cassie. Your kids gave that to you. That's right. Keep it. That's right. That's right. And I, listen, I'll, I'll make it right with God. <laughs> there you go. it to the 10% bridge, the 90% bridge, God, God, listen, he goes on to say in Malachi that if you do this, he'll open the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing you cannot receive, and he will rebuke the devourer for your sake. It goes with the same promise. What I liken this is to, if you give God the first 10% of your increase, then what you have just done is built 10% of the bridge. God then will build 90% of the bridge and give you the blessing. But then he will cancel.
camouflage your money so the devil can't find it. He's going to rebuke the devil where your funds are concerned. Uh -huh. That's right. Because you obeyed him and you put that. It's, God counts it as though you gave 100% if you give 10 is what I'm saying. Yes. Okay? Right. I don't know how that got so complicated, but anyway, I'm, I'm glad we're over it. Number four? See, now, y'all wasted Number four. time on it. <laughs> Number four? Number four. <laughs> Moving along. All right. Personalize. Got to gotta do your part. The woman, when, when Elijah was down in Zarephath, and the woman said, we don't, my son and I, we're about to eat our last meal and we're going to starve to death. And yep. here you are asking me for food. He said, don't be afraid. Make me a cake first. Yep. Yep. Not last, yep. first. Yep. And the Bible says for the next three and a half years, yep. Yep. She every time she went to the barrel, yep. there was meal. And every time she went to the cruise, there was oil. Yes. Because it didn't get all of a sudden filled up, but it never ran out. Yes. That's the blessing of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the man of God said, you got to do your part first so God can yes. do his part. Mm -hmm. It's the law of first giving. That's what a farmer does. Yes. He gives to the ground the seed, yes. and the ground gives back to him the harvest. Mm -hmm. You see? Yes. And it's a law of numbers. God's not going to aberrate it. He's going to do what he said. Okay. Now, uh, Jesus, Peter, Peter wanted to walk on the water to go to Jesus. But he had to do his part first and step out of the boat. Mm -hmm. You have to do your part first. So, number three is do your part. You've got to prepare to the level of your expectation. When Elijah was expecting fire to fall, he built an altar that was commensurate with a falling fire. He, he soaked it with 12 barrels of water. And the fire that fell soaked up all of that water, steamed it right on up, even, even scorched the ground. But he was preparing to the level of his expectation. That's what you're doing. When you do your part, you're preparing for God to do his part. You never outgive God. We, we, we strain at gnats and swallow camels, and we were, am I supposed to give this? Am I supposed to do that? But listen, God could pay you in planets if he wanted to. Wouldn't help you any. You, don't, you wouldn't know what to do with them. But, I mean, he's God. You're never going to come up short if you trust God. Yeah. Okay, so do your part. you got to march around Jericho before you see the walls fall. Yeah. you got to do your part first. Okay, now the, number four. Personalize the promise. Personalize the promise. That means you got to make it your promise. It's in the Bible. It's to everybody. But you've got to make it yours. you got to make it as though God is talking to you. You and God are sitting alone in your closet, and he's talking to you. That's how personal the promise must be. You personalize it. You research it. You pray about it. You confess it. You meditate on it until it becomes a part of you. The promise that pertains to what you're looking for. The promise. Stand on the promise. Sit on the promise. Soak on the promise. That means you personalize it. So that's number four. You got to make it your promise. That thing that you're believing God for will not manifest until you make it yours. You understand it? Now, I'm at number four. I've got five things. I'm going to stop right here. Aww. See, y'all made me do this. <laughs> if you will show up next week, I'll start with number five. 
we'll go from there. Is that okay with you? Yeah, we'll All right. okay. Stand up on your feet. <laughs>